Well, it's still Manchester. We're still green. It's, it's still, still raining. raining. <laughs> but we found a green lady. <laughs> so who are you? Hi, Dave. I'm Jade. Um, Jade Edwards from ZapMap Insights. Right. So what do you do with ZapMap? Yeah, so ZapMap is hopefully an app that pretty much everybody will be familiar with. Yeah. Um, what I do is I take all the data from behind the app and then look at how we can use that in a more B2B context. So right. how can we package that up for charge point operators themselves to help them with their rollouts and, and the planning for their um, networks. We sell that data to the governments. So they can use it for the official charge point statistics. Yeah. We use it to respond to media inquiries so we can help get the facts out there about what's actually going on with the charging network. Because we do find ZapMap is brilliant for some of the data you do, some of the surveys you do with yeah. Uh, charge your usage, charge your occupancy yeah. rates and everything. So you're involved in all of yeah, that. Yeah, that's all my kind of area. Right. And so and, I mean, that leads into one of these reports. You, yes. You're sort of the back, the back room to get those the exactly. data into the reports. Yeah, and get it into right. the right hands of the right people. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we get loads of comments about was that map, some good, some bad. And it's the same with charges, same yeah. with cars, the same with everything. So uh, what is it you're trying to offer to the EV drivers? Yeah, so through ZapMap itself, it's about helping the EV drivers to charge with confidence. So it's about for new drivers, understanding actually what is it going to be like to use public charging. So we have loads of guides and help on the website and within the app. Um, to help those new drivers, but also drivers that may have been driving an EV for years. It's about making sure when they're out and about using charges in a different part of the country, somewhere they're not familiar, that they've got that confidence to know, OK, that map's got me. I can plan what I'm going to do and I'm not going to have any problems. Yeah, because it's one of the issues we get asked all the time, which is the best route planner, for example, or which is the best uh, app for finding where the charges are. Yeah. And you've got a fair bit of competition out there, yeah, of course, because yeah. every EV has got something built into it which would bypass you totally. Yeah. Um, and yet you're still a major force. Yeah, well, we so. do find, and I'm sure a lot of people say this, that with a lot of the ones that are inbuilt into the cars, they just don't have the coverage yeah. of actually what's out there or the accuracy. Yes. Um, I remember a, um, a colleague who worked for a consultancy and he tagged me in something on LinkedIn because he went out into Devon and Cornwall somewhere. His car told him to go down this lane. There was a charger. There was nothing. And he was just like, should I use that map? Should I use that map? Why did I not? Um, so yeah, we, we are really committed to getting the best quality we possibly can for every charger that we can get on that map. That's excellent. Um, you obviously watch things like uh, occupancy rates. Yeah. So you get access to live data. Yeah. So when someone unplugs from a specific charger, that, that information is available to you straight away. Yeah. So, and how quickly does that then get onto your app? Within minutes. It's, it's uh, Yeah, quick. yeah, yeah, it's really quick. So we have those live feeds um, for probably now over 85% of all the chargers. Okay. Um, because following the new regulations that came in, two big ones that we hadn't had previously, Tesla and Podpoint, we've now got those. We ah, had pretty much be one all of the questions. other big ones anyway. Yeah. Um, and that data is just feeding through, straight through our system, straight on the app so that you can see what's going on. You know, I was checking before about these chargers on ZapMap to check which ones were you know, looking like I was going to get onto them sooner rather than later. Because we often stop and we look and you know, we, we, on the way there, it'll say there's five available. You get there, there's seven or two. And you're thinking, how accurate are these? Yeah, it is, uh, and it it is, is pretty it's, quick. It's a very dynamic situation because yes. uh, charging is getting quicker generally, I think. Uh, in the old days, you could be yeah, there yeah. an hour. Now it's sort of 20 minutes, 30 minutes is about average. Yeah. So much quicker turnover. Uh, interesting you talk about Tesla because you were never very strong with Tesla before. Uh, I'm a Tesla driver, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Tesla just did their own thing, which, you yeah. know, they got an amazing network of all their own chargers anyway, did their own thing. But following that legislation, they've put out an open data feed. We've connected to that. So now we have all, we had all the Tesla sites on ZapMap. We didn't have live connection. Right. And um, now we've got them all with the live connection. Uh, does that apply to pricing? Because Teslas have their own pricing structures with time of day. No, it, it, they give us some pricing information, which will show through the app. But you would also want to look at actually what Tesla are saying about their pricing because they are yeah. so dynamic uh, with their pricing. Yeah. Some yeah. of them have five time zones in a day and yeah. it can be two or three times the difference between yeah. them. So it's like 50p when you get there. But if you wait an hour, it's 20p. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite yeah. amazing. We can only share what they share with us. So that's, you know, fairly. So do they share that with, with you or do they think, just give you an overview? I of... think they just give an overview, yeah. Tesla. We definitely don't have like 
you know, yes, it's definitely going to be that price at that Tesla. Right. Um, yeah. So with BEV, you, you will get live feed from them as well. Correct. And we have them on our payment platform, BEV. So it's exactly the price you're going to pay if you're going to use that pay um, to make that payment as opposed to doing so it through the BEV. Sell platform. it now. What's that pay? Why should anyone use it? So payments um, as that map is basically um, where we've gathered the payment feeds for a number of um, charge point operators. And it means you can pay within the ZapMap app. You don't have to download one of their apps. Um, you get the full receipt and all the kind of VAT stuff from it. So I think that's quite important, depending if you're going to need to um, be expensing anything. Um, and it just means, yeah, you can actually initiate everything from the car and then just get out, plug it in. Um, and you can then monitor it on your phone. So if you've not got that through your car app or whatever, yeah. you can still go off and know exactly what state of charge you're at. Yeah. And that includes keeping up with the current pricing because you hear there's an off-peak rate overnight. Yeah. And you, you, you keep up yeah. with that. Yeah, so we keep up with that. So that all gets passed through, yeah. And with some of the apps, apps, you get a discount for using the app. You do, you with the zap map you'll pay what the rate is you'll just pay what the rate is yeah. and that's one of the things why some people will choose to use an app is because they're going to give a preferential rate for yeah. their own app but then you've got to have all you know different apps yeah, so it the, depends which ones you want really yeah yeah so you're finding uh, as a general rule for evs it's a booming industry uh, are you fairly static or what, what do you it's, find no it's growing growing very quickly and <laughs> um, we're always struggling to keep up um so yeah in terms of just the charger numbers are growing um you know, we're at over 80,000 yeah. devices now, yeah. so there's different ways of measuring yeah. what there are. But, you know, what we've talked about previously, we're at eight, over 80,000 now. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of even, you know, the, the switch to EVs yeah. as well, you know, that's grown extraordinary rates. You, so. you look surprised when I ask the question, but I'd always try and ask an open question. Yeah. I hate surveys where it says, uh, which of the following reasons stopped you buying uh, an EV, for example? Was it, it was a horrendous price. You know, yeah. I, I love asking questions which uh, don't prompt you with the right answer. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> constantly moving. It's constantly growing. The charge point operators are gunning to get more sites in the ground, that's for sure. Um, so. We're finding the DNOs, the electricity supply, is the, is the holding point for a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of complexity with them, especially sites like this, you know, where it's ultra rapid. Um, they've got so much power they need at this yeah. site to be able to deliver. So anything like this is a huge investment yeah. from one of these charge point operators. Yeah. Um, but they are going for it and they're making that investment and they're trying to put the best stuff out there that they can. Yeah. So message for a potential EV owner in terms of charging, is it anything to be afraid of? And will they find charging where and when they need it? Yeah, um, it's not anything to be afraid of. Get that map, number one. Um, you can then see everything, and we try and show everything. So whether it's a lamppost slow charger that you might have to plug into and charge overnight near your home, or whether it's an amazing hub like this, we try and show the whole thing, and you can filter by all the different types. So the main thing is about understanding what type of charging do you need for your situation at that time, and then looking on ZapMap, and you can find the solution for that. I think it's one of the amazing things that we find with uh, new EV owners is they're so used to going and buying petrol and wherever you go, it's the same price. Yeah. And you come to EVs and you think, hang on, they're 20p, they're 79p. What's going on? And it's a learning curve, isn't yeah. it? And, and services like yours are trying to sort of bring all this together yeah. to make it easier. So they've got so. good choice. And that's the beauty, really, with EV charging is you've got so much more choice. Yeah. is you can decide, actually, this one's more convenient for me. I like this brand. I'm willing to pay a premium for that, or actually, I want the cheapest. Yes. I can go a bit further and pay less. Yes. Um, there's so much choice around it, and I think that's the beauty. Yeah. In terms of route planners, you've got a, uh, yeah. uh, in, inside the app and also on your website. Yes. So you can now just type in Rome, for example. Did you go abroad as well? Yeah, we do. You yeah, do. we've got um, network coverage in um, mainland Europe and also in the US. Right, so it's so simple as you type in your destination. Yeah. It knows your car because you tell it the car. Yeah. How and much charge you've got. Yeah. And then it will. You can get it to suggest chargers. You can get it to show all the chargers. Can and you arrive with a certain route. percentage? Yeah. And yeah. you can do all of that to kind of make sure you get where you want to be. Right. Comfortably. Excellent. And is that relatively new, or has that been out for a while? No, that's been out for a while. And right. um, we're always making updates and improvements. Yeah. But the route planner has been one of the core features of the app for a long time. And that's proving very popular. Yeah. Yeah, it's just trying to make it easier for yeah, us. I know exactly. I drive a Tesla and they make it easy. Yeah. But to be able to get in your car and go, right, we're going to go to Rome, you know, just type in Rome and uh, the car goes tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And Give it's you, all planned. Yeah. And, and that's such a 
a relief to an awful yeah. lot of people. They think, oh, I'm going to have to get loads of apps, I'm going to have to do this. But with yeah. yours, you can actually select. Uh, you can select which, which networks which you're network. interested in. So again, if you were like, oh, I only want to use ZapMap to pay on this yeah. journey. I don't want to be messing about with other apps. You can then filter it for the networks right. that we've got payment partnerships with yeah. and just show those. Or you can um, choose a particular or network. Or you can choose a particular network, yeah. So I only ever want to use Ionity on yes. my journey and yeah. that's what it'll do yeah. for you. Excellent. Yeah. Right. It's about choice. So anything new coming along on the horizon? Anything surprising that we don't know about yet? Ooh. <laughs> um, so we've just sort of launched a partnership with Hive. Um, okay. So we have started bringing out RFID cards. Right. So we haven't had those before at ZapMap. We've launched some with Hive. And now if you go on ZapMap, you can request um, being added to a list to get an RFID card. So that's a new proposition that we're bringing out. So then you can use all the payment networks on ZapMap. But if you want to do that through an RFID rather than paying through the app, you've got right. that option as well. So that's the kind of new thing that we've um, brought out at the moment. And have you got any uh, input into home charges at any point? We don't, um, we don't do much anything really on home charging. We're all about the public charging experience at yeah. ZapMap. Well, I actually think at the moment it's probably stopped raining. So uh, I think I'm going to step quick. out from under the <laughs> umbrella. Uh, we're going to get out into the blue, not the green. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. It's been thank a great you. pleasure talking it's to you. It's been lovely to meet you, Dave. Uh, we'll put this out on the video. and We'll try and educate some of our viewers. Fabulous. Uh, so they can have a look into it. Whether they choose you or not is not up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will, Dave. Come on. Come on Positivity. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Dave, this is Dave Takes It On.